Hi everyone, my name is Inesh. I am a PhD student at the Royal Veterinary College and I'm going to talk to you about my research project. My research focuses on schistosomiasis, which is a neglected tropical disease caused by parasitic worms called schistosomes. This can also be called blood flukes. This disease affects, uh, has affected uh, people for thousands of years and currently affects more than 230 million people worldwide, the majority living in Sub-Saharan Africa. This disease has a very complicated life cycle. Uh, so in humans, it involves humans, snails, and water bodies, and this makes it really hard to get rid of this disease. People become infected by swimming in contaminated waters, and uh, once you are infected, the adult worms live for many years inside the blood vessels, near the intestine or the bladder. Then these adult worms expel eggs to the external environment through uh, feces or urine of infected individuals. Although there isn't still a vaccine for schistosomiasis, there is an effective drug that kills the adult worms. And the World Health Organization has targeted this disease for elimination as a public health problem through mass drug distribution of this drug, mainly targeted at school-aged children. So my project is about using genetic data for estimating schistosome worm burdens. So what I mean for schistosome worm burdens, I mean that we want to estimate the number of worms that are infecting an individual. And this is important because the severity of the symptoms that you have from this disease uh, will depend on the number of worms that are infecting you. So symptoms can, can range from urinary to intestinal, but in more chronic infections, they can lead to organ damage and cancer. So it's really important to know how many worms are infecting individuals. Also, the more worms you have, the more you will contribute to the disease transmission, which is also important. However, we know that we cannot collect uh, the worms from infected individuals since they live inside the blood vessels. But what we can do though is to collect the eggs which are expelled to the external environment. So if we collect the egg samples by analyzing the genetic data of the eggs and the sibling relationships between the eggs, we can reconstruct the, their parentage and have an idea of the number of worms that are infected, infecting an individual using sheep sheep reconstruction, which is a method that you can use to find this. However, this method will only give you a rough idea of the number of worms that are infecting an individual because it will depend on the number of offspring samples, which in this case are the eggs that you take. So for example, if someone is infected with six worms uh, or worm pairs, and you want to know how many worms are infecting this individual, but you only collect two eggs. So if, you only, if these eggs are not si uh, siblings, from collecting these two eggs, you will only find two mothers and two fathers, so two worm pairs. So you will, you will miss out on four worm pairs of this individual. So, we developed a statistical model that ac accounts for this bias and uncertainty. And we applied it to data of schistosome infected children in Tanzania. So here in this plot, you can see that um, in, uh, we show how important it is to, uh, how important offspring sample sizes are for the precise estimation of the number of worms that are infecting an individual. So in this plot, each dot corresponds to one infected children. And you can see that if we look at the yellow dot, uh, in these children, the number of offspring sampled was very high. So, and these children has a very narrow confidence interval, which means that this result will be much more reliable than on the other hand in the purple case, where the confidence intervals are very wide and the number of offspring samples was very uh, was smaller. So this shows the importance of offspring sample size to use in sheep sheep reconstruction. 
And this model can also be used for the inter interpretation of genetic data collected during helmet control programs and could even be adapted to other parasite species. So I would like to thank you all for listening and I would like to thank RVC for funding my project as well as my PhD supervisors and Dr. Charlotte Gower for um, providing us access to the Tanzanian data set. You can find out more about our paper in the link below and you can also use our user-friendly web application to explore the model functionalities without needing to code. Thank you. The main reason that inspired me to pursue a degree in science was that I really liked science subjects at school. I particularly liked biology, but other reason, reasons were that you can have a positive impact on people's lives using science and also because it's uh, intellectually challenging for me and you can have a variety of job opportunities afterwards. What I enjoy most about my current research is that I can apply my background in veterinary medicine whilst learning new things about quantitative epidemiology and infectious disease modeling and statistics. And that means that I learn new things all the time and makes it really intellectually challenging and exciting for me. And also as a whole, I really enjoy the process of uh, getting data and analyzing the data, interpreting the results and also communicating the results to an audience. The model presented in this research project could be used to investigate certain aspects of the population biology of schistosomiasis. And that's actually what we are working on at the moment. And yeah, that's the paper that we are finishing now. I still don't have any specific next steps, but I know that I would like to continue working within the fields of quantitative epidemiology and infectious diseases. So specifically for anyone wanting to pursue a PhD, I would advise to try it out first and uh, see what research is really like. And that could be done through internships in a, lab, in a lab that you really enjoy, or you could do a master of research or even work as a research assistant before you commit to a long-term uh, degree like a PhD. And also when you are applying for uh, positions or PhDs, uh, don't let self-doubt stop you because you might never know if you, got, if you might get the position.